In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have taught your church to keep all the heavenly commandments by loving you and loving our neighbor, grant us a spirit of peace and grace so that your entire family may be devoted to you wholeheartedly and united in purity of intent. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Gird yourselves and weep, O priests. Wail, O ministers of the altar. Come, spend the night in sackcloth, O ministers of my God. The house of your God is deprived of offering and libation. Proclaim a fast, call an assembly, gather the elders, all who dwell in the land, into the house of the Lord your God and cry to the Lord. Alas, the day, for near is the day of the Lord, and it comes as ruin from the Almighty. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all who dwell in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. Yes, it is near, a day of darkness and of gloom, a day of clouds and somberness, like dawn spreading over the, the mountains, a people numerous and mighty. Their like has not been from of old, nor will it be after them, even to the years of distant generations. The word of the Lord. The Lord will judge the world with justice. The Lord will judge the world with justice. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will declare all your wondrous deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, Most High. The Lord will judge the world with justice. You rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. Their name you blotted out forever and ever. The nations are sunk in the pit they have made. In the snare they set, their foot is caught. The Lord will judge the world with justice. But the Lord sits enthroned forever. He has set up his throne for judgment. He judges the world with justice. He governs the people with equity. The Lord will judge the world with justice. Alleluia, alleluia. The prince of this world will be cast out, and when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all to myself, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When Jesus had driven out a demon, some of the crowd said, by the power of Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. 
Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and house will will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that it is by Beelzebul that I drive out demons. If I then drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your own people drive them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armor on which he relied and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When an unclean spirit goes out of someone, it roams through arid regions, searching for rest, but finding none, it says, I shall return to my home from which I came. But upon returning, it finds it swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and brings back seven other spirits, more wicked than itself, who move in and dwell there. And the last condition of that man is worse than the first. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, we are seeing more and more prophecy now in the, in the first reading now from the prophet Joel, all talking about really the end time, all talking about what is going to happen at that time. And uh, I suppose it, um, it would um, fill us with fear, the, the coming judgment of the Lord, but we must remember, of course, that the Lord is merciful but also just. So what does the prophet Joel call for? He says, well, gather everyone together. Bring them together. Let's go into the house of our God. Let's go and pray and make ourselves ready for his coming. It is a, it is a, a wonderful thing that he is asking for. He is asking for prayer, for fasting, uh, other penitential practices. He talks about spending the night in sackcloth. These penitential practices are good things to be doing. These, uh, whenever we take on a penance, whenever, whether it's maybe perhaps a simple one of prayer through the confessional or any voluntary penances we might take on, these are all good things for building up the kingdom, helping us personally to be ready for the coming of the Lord, but helping us as a people, to be ready, to be ready, and to seek God's mercy as he judges. So there's this, um, uh, there's this expectation again that the Lord is coming and they need to be ready. They need to be ready. They recognize that he will judge. There will be a time when that happens. And of course, they have to be ready for it. Uh, Jesus makes an interesting um, an interesting. Uh, observation today in the gospel, which is uh, something that really, I think, can be generalized to many different things. But he's talking about the, the sa- Satan's kingdom. And he said, if Satan is divided against himself, his kingdom cannot stand. And any kingdom, any nation that has division risks its dissolution as a result of of that, of not resolving that conflict. Keeping, keeping that conflict going, keeping that separation going, that leads to demise. Working together, understanding one another, realizing that there are people that think differently than we do, than I do, and yet not demonizing them, but wanting to work with them, This is the way for us to continue. But the other path 
this leads to destruction. This leads to a complete falling apart of everything. As I suppose every, every nation has dealt with um, at one time or another, has, has seen its own demise at its own hands. Let's not leave on such a somber note, though. <laughs> Let me try to say something that, is, um, that, is, uh, that can help us in this time. Jesus is speaking about um, something actually that we talked about on our retreat. We were talking about times of spiritual consolation and desolation. And I, I imagine that um, when someone has been freed from an evil spirit, and I'm speaking about this in just a very general sense and not just not anything in particular about demonic possession or something like that. What I'm really speaking about is perhaps we overcome a particular sin through God's grace. We've been able to eliminate perhaps a sin from our lives. And like I say, sort of figuratively that we eliminate that, that demon in our lives. We must realize that we open ourselves up to even more opposition from Satan because he fears losing us and he wants us. So <clears throat> we, excuse me. <clears throat> so we hear in the, um, in the gospel today that, that that spirit that's been thrown out brings seven more back with him to try to uh, continue our desolation, to try to co continue um, our loss in, uh, in, in that sin. And we have to stand firm, and we have to make use of these practices that are um, so much a part of our Christianity. We have to pray. We have to do penance. We have to do things to strengthen ourselves against, uh, against uh, evil entering into our lives so that we can continue living in a place of, of goodness of holiness, of what our retreat master would call spiritual consolation. Um, it, uh, it can look awfully grave. It can look, it, we can fall into times where things just seem to be uh, irreconcilable, where things just seem so far beyond, and we start to lose hope. That's where we need to double our efforts with regard to our prayer, our penances, other, um, uh, other religious practices um, and other works of goodness and charity can all bring us back and make us even stronger to resist evil. So, um, a challenge for us this Friday, this Friday as we, and as we do on each Friday, remember, remember the suffering and death of Jesus always conscious, always remembering that there will be a resurrection. Even when we find ourselves in difficulty, there will be a time when that will be over. And we thank the Lord for all that he provides for us, particularly in the Eucharist today, to help us to avoid sin, to live in his goodness, and to know his consolation. So let's pray. We offer the Mass uh, today in memory of Elisa Owens B. Thompson. We pray to the Lord. We continue um, special prayers for uh, Joey Zima, for Barbara Ruggiero, for Christy, um, for Donna Wise, for Susan and David Harrelson, and uh, for uh, Rita's son. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the happy repose of the soul of Jean Narciso, uh, who uh, uh, died yesterday or died Wednesday. Excuse me. We pray to the Lord. We continue prayers of healing and comfort for Melissa, Phyllis, Alice Scholl, uh, Tony Day, Kathy, uh, Baby Thad, Woody and Elaine Gales, Mr. and Mrs. Ingle, Kate Kopic, Sophia Mordini. Gail Powell, Kitty Spurrier, Carmela Albachowski, Kenny, Bishop Peter Jugas, 
Marie, Trevor Redmond, Marie de Mouton, William Lemayne, Madison Placencia, Herman de Santiago, and Eva Tabora. We pray to the Lord. We pray for an end of violence both in the war in Ukraine and the one in uh, Israel and Palestine. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the 17 uh, young adults that will be making their confirmation on Saturday. We pray that uh, in the preparation they have received for this sacrament, they may be sustained by the fullness of the Spirit and live uh, committed Christian lives. We pray to the Lord. Um, any other prayers you'd like to pray? Lord, hear our prayer. 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 All powerful God, you are our leader, king, and guide. You entrust the world to us as your stewards. Free us from undue attachment to power and control. When we lead, may we do so in a spirit of service to your reign. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who renew us in your image through your sacraments and your commandments, mercifully guide our footsteps in your paths, that through these sacrificial offerings which we bring, we may possess the gift of charity for which you have taught us to hope through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for through him you brought us to the knowledge of your truth, so that by the bond of one faith and one baptism, we might become his body. Through him you poured out your Holy Spirit among all the nations, so that in a wondrous manner he might prompt and engender unity in the diversity of your gifts, dwelling within your adopted children, and filling and ruling the whole church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Joan of Arc, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. We have received, O Lord, the sacrament of unity. Grant us, we pray, that living in your house in holy accord, we may possess the peace we hand on and preserve the peace we have received. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.